Hey there, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Wake Up! I'm your host, The Real Dorky Hero, and today we'll be continuing the narrative, or I should say the critique of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers versus Die Ranger this time, or Power Rangers versus Super Sentai. Again, uh, Power Rangers is just a show that is done here as far as the regular scenes are concerned. The action scenes are done in Japan. It is all borrowed from Japan. So, season two of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers has a different set of five teens. Season one, the, the five teenagers were just a bunch of average Joes, but they cleaned it up in season two, had a tournament. <laughs> they had a tournament at Ernie's Shake Shack, a martial arts tournament, and three ninjas Wow, I'm just remembering this as I go along. Three ninjas just happened to appear and join in on the tournament and they won. I've never been so annoyed by this show a day in my life because the more I think about it, the more it doesn't make sense. Why were they hit? Why were their faces hidden? We've never seen them before. We don't even know who these people are. Just put them in the fight. But anyway, three people were put into the competition and they turned out to be Rocky, Adam, and Aisha. Due to legal disputes, if you want to call it that, or a pay dispute to be specific, Jason, Trini, and Zach were like, we're out of here. If you go and you watch a documentary about the, the whole making of the show, they talk about the working conditions, which apparently aren't that great. And what sucks is here in 2018, apparently things haven't changed much. I've been to about three or four Power Rangers themed cons and I've heard the stories and Everyone says the same thing. It kind of blows to be there. I've always wanted to be a Power Ranger, which is why I have a helmet now, along with three or four other helmets. But I wouldn't want to be on the show if that's the condition they're working in. Anyway, they were just done. And so they had to find a way to work around it because they left. It wasn't like, oh, okay, shoot a couple more episodes and then you can go. No, they left. And for a few episodes between season one and season two, Actually, I believe they're mostly in season two. Uh, you can tell. You can tell that they're gone because most, if not all, the dialogue is Billy, Kim, and Tommy. And if you ever see the other three, it's a clip that was used from season, recycled from season one or worse. It's stand-ins with their backs to the camera hanging out in the background. And they'll just turn their face like this and just, yeah. <laughs> if someone's talking to them, that's it. Or even worse, somebody tries their absolute best to do a Jason impression. God damn, is the difference notable. You guys, we from Switzerland. All three of us? Yep. Congratulations. It's a chance of a lifetime. Get out of here. I'll try and distract them. Are you sure? Don't worry about me. I'll call on my sword. We'll meet at the statue. Right. Be careful. Come on, guys. Let's go. Good luck, my friends. We're gonna need it. My favorite one is is Zordon tells them somebody did something to their to their Megazord, and he goes, "Oh man, can you do that?" And it's like. Uh, Jason doesn't even have an accent. Where is this coming from? Anyway, so for season two, it was, the lineup was uh, Rocky, Aisha, Adam, Kim, Tommy again, and Billy. And in this season, actually, those three were still here when the swords changed. But in any case, in this season, all of the footage was used up for uh, Jew Ranger. They had completely run out because Jew Ranger was only 50 episodes long. Mighty Morphin is 140 some shit. Yeah, and uh, and that includes the Alien Rangers, but we'll talk about that later. That is a very cringeworthy series. In this one, um, they ran out of things to do, so they bought what's called U2 footage, which is where, like I said, the Green Ranger powers were done. They were over with, but Tommy was so popular as the Green Ranger, they ordered a whole lot more footage, no Megazord fights, but literally just longer putty fights. And even then the putty fights weren't even that long cause they were just filled in with clips of bulk and skull that just happened to be in the area. And it would just like be a, a clip of the Red Ranger punching a putty and then it'll zoom out a little bit and bulk and skull will be there and be, oh, did you see that? Wow. And they just kept finding ways to put them in each clip to try and fucking save money, I guess. Die Ranger on the other hand, isn't bullshitting like that. Die Ranger, is where this guy comes from. Dairanger is where the Thunderzords came from. 
So the reason they didn't use these suits is because in uh, Mighty Morphin was so popular, they didn't want to test the waters, I guess. They didn't want to uh, run the risk of losing fans because they don't recognize the suits. You see how well that turned out 20 something years later. Anyway, uh, yeah, they kept the Mighty Morphin suits, but they switched the Megazord to the Thunder Megazord, which is my favorite. I don't know why I got Daijujin tattooed on me when I should have gotten Dairino tatted on me. I'll talk about him later. Dairino is the Megazord for this season. So the season two characters, or rather the Die Ranger characters, are Ryo, Daigo, Shoji, Kazu, and Rin. Those are the core five. And for them, they were... This season is actually based on Chinese mythology, which is why the dragon, the red dragon Zord, is very serpent-like, while Dragon Caesar is very bulky and traditional, and he's from a different part of the world. His influence is from a different part of the world. It was all based in China, and um, it's actually pretty cool because there's an explanation for how they fight, because they weren't really martial artists. They just relied on Ki. Ki wasn't teaching them how to fight. Ki, in a way, just told them how to direct their movements and their energy. It was demonstrated when their Zordon, Kaku was his name, um, had Ryo, who was just a fucking dishwasher. He was just a dishwasher. He got abducted because uh, they could sense his power. They could sense how much key he had emanating in him and around him. So they abducted him and they're like, he's like, I don't want to be whatever this is. You guys abducted me. And Kaku was like, shut up. And he threw a knife at him. And he, like, without thinking, he channeled the key and dodged it. He's like, what the fuck was that? How did I do that? He's like, yeah, you gotta learn to use your key. That's how this works. So yeah, that's pretty much the central focus. I mean, I guess in a way it's kind of cheating and it sounds very Star Wars-y. You know, you're using the force, but in them it's them using the key. Goku uses key and he shoots Kamehameha waves. They don't shoot Kamehameha waves, so they shoot something similar to that. I think it's called the Key Power Bomber. It's pretty cool. You should check it out. But yeah, so that's the five for each respective season. The villain for this one in Mighty Morphin season two was Lord Zed. Lord Zed, as it turns out, was the one who sent Rita to conquer the Earth 10,000 years ago. And when her when she got that fight with Zordon for the planet, Zordon was like, fuck your shit. You're going in the dumpster. And Zorita was like, yeah, well, I'm gonna warp your whole body somewhere else, but keep your consciousness here. And the only way you can survive is if you stand in a tube. Survive, I said that so weird. They put his consciousness in a time warp tube and his body is just off in space somewhere in another dimension. That's fucking weird. But in this season, Lord Zed was like, God damn it, Rita, 10,000 years and you still couldn't get your shit together. I'm taking over. So she came, he came and put her back in the dumpster and sent her off into space and took over the shit himself. Um, that's the villain for this one. And by the way, there's no counterpart for Lord Zed. He was actually, good job, Saban. This was an American made villain and he's my favorite. He's my favorite villain of all the Power Ranger lore. So good job with him. The Dire Ranger villains are the Gorma tribe. The Gorma tribe is some satanic shit. Like they said, that Dai Satan was the... As a matter of fact, now I think about it, uh, almost all Super Sentai are very heavily influenced. Their villains are very he heavily influenced by Satan or, or something of that nature. I don't understand. I understand, but I don't understand. So uh, in this one, the Gorma tribe are three <laughs> gimps, so to speak. And when I say gimps, I mean, if you've seen Pulp Fiction and you remember what the gimp looked like, they all kind of look like him. I can only say this confidently because I love it. It's my favorite show, but goddamn, that bondage shit that BDSM y'all are into is something else. You can't dispute that. So it's Sh Shadam, Zydos, and Gara. Those are the three. They're the three generals. And then there's like a whole hierarchy that I'm not gonna get into because I still, however long ago I first saw the shit, don't understand it. I have the box set. My good friend over here bought it for me for Christmas. They bought it for me for Christmas. I've watched it several times. I still don't get this shit. But in any case, excuse me, the Gorma tribe are pretty much like some trio. 
in the hierarchy of evil that are just, I don't even know what they're trying to do. I think they're trying to get rid of the Kiroku, which is like the full term for Ki, because they use a different version. They use a dark version called Yuroku. And there's been uh, a war going on for years. Which one is the better one? And the Dai Rangers utilize Kiroku. Um, that's why in their morphing call, they say Kiroku Tenshin Ora Chenja, which means uh, key power fortification or a change, something to that effect. So it's pretty cool. It's actually really cool to watch. I love it. It's more martial arts based. As a matter of fact, um, Ryo kind of models himself after Bruce Lee throughout the whole show. It's really great. I met him two years ago and he was wearing that outfit. Loved him. He was an amazing dude. But yeah, that's the villain thing. There's also a sub-villain that is probably my second favorite villain in that series. His name is Akumaru. I'm gonna explain to you what he's like in a minute. Back to the six warrior aspect. Tommy, once again, is the big bad dude on the scene. Um, when the Green Ranger footage ran out, they were getting ready to get rid of him and put him on his own show. But people loved him so much, they're like, no, we wanna keep him here. But they ran out of Green Ranger footage, so what did they do? Aside from taking the Megazords from Die Ranger, they also took the sixth warrior suit. And that, my friends, is where this guy comes in. In Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, he goes by the name Saba. This fucker, this dope dude right here, I'm trying to get him to say his lines, but he's not saying them. Textbook technical difficulties, but in any case, Saba does talk. I actually really liked his voice. The White Ranger is definitely my favorite of all the six warriors. Not Tommy though, just the White Ranger. He's really fucking dope and I love Saba and the Tiger Zord just drives me nuts. He's really, really sick. But in any case, that's where he comes from. And in America, he's named Saba and he just talks and that was it. He just came, he just came with the White Ranger suit. That was it, there was no backstory behind him. And uh, he was created with the power of pure white light. You guys really are racist. <laughs> but in any case, um, not you guys, but Saban, you, I, there's a history of this shit, the history of it. But in any case, yeah, that's why they, that's where he came from. Tommy was just given the new suit that they just made with the power of white pure energy. On the Die Ranger side of things, the story is significantly better. First and foremost, the White Ranger is a kid. He's not an adult. He's a little kid. I believe he's eight or 10, somewhere in there. And his name was Ku. Um, it's spelled Ku. I think they said Ko a couple times. I'm gonna say Ko because Ku sounds dumb. But Ko was a badass. No, he wasn't, he was a little brat. He was actually just as bad as Kai, all these three letter K names. He's just as bad as Kai from uh, the Zoo Ranger in the first season. But he had like a good streak in him and he was trying to, you know, he just lost his parents and he was just like an orphan and he didn't know what the life was going to be like for him. But one day he woke up and he heard roaring and he followed the roaring to this. It was Byako Shinken is his name and he was holstered. It was some King Arthur type shit, some Excalibur type shit. He ran over and found him and he pulled him out because he was the chosen one. Real quick, Byako Shinken wasn't just there. There was a character named Gohan that looks like Grandpa Gohan that was Rin's grandfather that appeared, taught them some new shit, gave them some new weapons, and said one day somebody who's worthy of this weapon will come and pull it from the, from the, the rock. And he puts it in the rock and then he just disappears forever. So Ku was, oh, also fun fact. There's a kid that portrays young Burai in flashbacks from Jew Ranger. That kid is also Ko in Die Ranger. So they recycled the kid. So how funny is it that both in Power Rangers and Super Sentai, the same person gets to play the same color twice. Tommy gets to be both green and white and Ko gets to, I'm not impressed. I know I sound very unenthused and it's cause I am. Fuck you, <laughs> Tommy, seriously, fuck you, Ko as a child was the ranger himself. And no, they didn't give him the Justin treatment, thank God. He didn't like get the morphed form and then grow into the suit. It was literally like a five foot, maybe a four foot 10 Power Ranger, but he kicked ass. 
The only thing that they actually modified on him was like he uh, inflated. So it looked like, cause he's a little kid, he's not gonna have muscle tone. So they just inflated him a little bit to make him look like a, just a short person. But in any case, he was really dope. And <laughs> a lot of the clips that you guys think are so dope of Tommy doing shit are from the same scene where Cole actually activates his ranger powers and starts fucking with people in the city. And I'm just gonna ruin that for you because that's funny to me. There's a clip that everybody loves where Tommy does this shit and it's used to be like, oh, I'm summoning the Tiger Sword now. No, in Thy Ranger, what's actually happening is Cole saw some girls in a park. They were all wearing skirts and he threw wind at them to raise their skirts up to watch that shit. Here's another one. There's a clip where Tommy's like, and he jumps, right? You think he's gonna jump on the Megazord? No, what is actually happening is he was skating on a skateboard in the city. He was in the middle of the street. A bus was coming at him and he's like, oh, I can jump that. And so he jumps over the bus and starts skating on it. Yes, he wasn't jumping on the Megazord, he was jumping on the bus. There's another clip where um, when he first, when Tommy first summons the Tiger Zord and the Tiger Zord is like jumping around and bouncing around and then it falls and he's like, whoa! And then Tommy falls himself. No, that's not what was happening either. T uh, Cole was actually um, fucking around with more people. There was a group of people playing baseball. Somebody hit a home run. Cole jumped up and caught it and then put it in his palm and flipped it and knocked out the whole team and then Byako Shinken actually has a lot of fucking power. He's a sword, but he has power. He used Kiroku, he's like, enough of this. And he summoned the baseball back and smacked the shit out of Ko and Ko went flying. That's where you see all the shit of him going flying and then when he hit the ground, that was him and then he demorphed. So yes, a lot of the clips that you see of Tommy doing dope ass shit was just Ko being a dick. But I still love Ko because Ko had the best art. Ko, as I said, was an orphan and um, he wasn't like somebody that was just like, one day I'm gonna have this. He has Kiroku, and he has a twin brother named Akamaru, who has Yuroku. As it turns out later in the story, Ko and Akamaru are the sons, the twin sons of Shadam, which is the leader of the Gorma tribe. And the mother was some female that Shadam met somewhere. He's like, I'ma fuck the shit out of you, and then leave. Um, she didn't want, she knew all about this. And she's like, I don't want my son to be part of this. Because Akomaru said, fuck it, I'm leaving, and he went. But Ko was like, I don't know what's going on. So she branded him with the tiger symbol, sealing all of the darkness within him, or the Yuroku. And all he had was Kiroku, and then that just, you know, developed into something else. Um, you really need to check this out because the story was great. Next up would be the Megazords. Uh, it was just the Thunderzord in Mighty Morphin. That's it. In Die Ranger, it was actually, they had to be earned. Like, it wasn't just, okay, here are your new swords. No. Um, everybody was just using the Red Dragon Thunder Zord, which is named Ryu Seo. They only had him. And they didn't even have the Red Ranger to pilot him. It was just their master that knew how to talk to him, because he was sentient too. So they only had him, and then they convinced Ryo to join the team, and then Ryo uh, met, actually, it wasn't even just him. Uh, Ryu Seo found Ryo and was like, hey Kaku, this is the guy that I need you to use to pilot me properly. So that's why they went looking for Ryo in the first place. That's why they did all the dumb shit. And then Ryo was like, oh, okay, maybe I can work this out. And that's how he became the fucking pilot for Ryu Seo. The other four Zords had to be earned. Um, they had to learn how to channel their key properly, how to harness it, and then how to harmonize that shit. And then one day, uh, Rin got summoned to another land entirely, where she ended up finding the um, orbs that they would use to connect with the Zord. She found them, and that's how they ended up connecting with the, the rest of the Thunder Zords. They are not sentient. Just Ryu Seo and Wan Tiger, which is the Tiger Zord. The Tiger Zord, yes, he is mildly sentient, but most of his consciousness is in Byako Shinken. Byako Shinken's the one that talks to him and tells him what to do. So when the kid goes into the Megazord, he just shouts the shit that Byako Shinken tells him to do, but it's it's very weird. Because Byako Shinken's doing all the work, but he tells Ko to do the work, but Ko's not even doing it. Ko's not even fighting. Byako Shinken takes over the body and just puppets him. 
he just needed somebody to sit in the suit so he could pop with the shit. Doesn't make sense, but I love it anyway. And I believe that just about covers it for season two of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers versus Die Ranger. Die Ranger is my favorite show. That's why I have the Ryu helmet and I've done the cosplay all together. Uh, I had a team for it too. We even have our own custom opening that a friend of us, a friend of mine did for us two years ago at a big event. So if you enjoyed this, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, show the Dropping Loads family some love. And if you like hearing my voice, I promise you I'm not this boring on my own channel. <laughs> uh, a real dorky hero. I play a lot of video games and do a lot of dumb shit. And if you want to hear me scream at a computer screen or a video game screen, that's where you can find me. Until next time, we love dropping loads.